Okay, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a real quick walkthrough of how this dash assembly is built. You can see right here, it's pretty basic. This is for my 2000, ooh, the glare there, 2000 Dodge Dakota. This replaces the factory instrument cluster. As you can see, you've got the outer bezel trim. And this is the main assembly that used to hold the uh, circuit boards. What I did is I basically just took an air saw and I cut the whole inside supporting structure out of it. It had a whole bunch of supporting structure for the circuit boards and the servo motors, all that. I got rid of all that. I did leave the stand off though, so in the future, if I want to, I can add a back plane onto this that'll let me add different little modules onto it or just make it more solid. It does it twist a little bit. You can see right there. But it's pretty solid once it's all screwed together. Uh, let's come in here and see. Here you will see the uh, Raspberry Pi 3. This is the new version. Or new S, it's not new. Get in here and focus, you damn thing. There you go. You'll see the heat sinks on the chips. Let's see here. This is a uh, Bluetooth module. For my Bluetooth uh, keyboard that I use, has your, your uh, network. It's got four uh, USB ports. Let's see here, I don't know if I can come over here and show it or not. HDMI, your micro USB to power this if you wanted to power it. It has a uh, composite video. And this is actually a slot for a different format video. Some of the uh, smaller screens use that slot. Let's see here. This right here is also a video. S I gotta open there, camera. Right there. This is also a video slot output slot that I'm using to drive the display driver board that's actually underneath. I'll show you all this when I get it apart. But that's the basic layout. Of course then you got this right here this here is just an extension for the uh, SD card slot that's on the board the uh, Pi has a uh, micro SD slot this is a micro SD adapter Let's see here. I just have a adapter holding my micro SD card in there I will use something like this in the final version but I'm going to use a uh, traditional micro SD adapter. I thought about trying to flush mount it into the panel here so you could just swap cards real quick. Okay, what we're going to do is we are going to take the bezel off. It is just held on with some screws. Here's a tip if you take electronics apart, use these little trays that your food comes in. These are great for holding the screws. Now, I, this is not the final version of this dash, so it's actually not completely finished assembled. But it was close enough that I could mock it up for the other videos you see on my channel. Let's see here. Okay. Off comes the outer trim ring. This, I didn't have to do anything to it. The factory gauges, they have the gauge panel, of course, with your needles. And then they have a clear piece that sets over this. In fact, uh, I thought I had it laying around here close, but I don't. So we'll set this off to the side. Okay. Here you can see this is just a piece of uh, eighth inch thick ABS plastic. Okay. But you can see here. I gotta be careful because that's actually not even fastened in yet. But it's hard to see. I need to get a better camera. Okay, then what we're going to do is we are going to lift the way this is assembled. What holds it, aligns it, is these two. Each side has a little alignment pin. You can see right there. So it just snaps onto those slots and it aligns it. Get the come off there if it's kind of tight. 
that down. Here is the uh, what I call a bucket. It's just the uh, main piece that holds all the gauges. It's still pretty solid. It's not as flimsy, even with all the support structure cut out of it. Okay. And here. Here is the display mounted in the plastic. Let's see here. Hold this damn thing together. You can see how thin that display is. That is a very, very thin display. It's a very, very thin display that actually fits really well into that plastic. Focus, damn it. Okay, here you can see. Now the display has tapped mounting bosses, so you can mount it into uh, a case or onto a panel. Focus. I actually have a case that you can buy that holds all this, and you can set it like an alarm clock on your desk or whatever if you wanted to. But I did ended up not using that. So pull this out. You can see right there. That is basically just a gauge base. It's not the prettiest, but it's straight and it's centered right where I need it. I just cut that out with my Dremel, taking my time, measuring about 47 times, and cutting once. All right, maybe twice. ABS plastic. So if you had to make a curved display, you could actually make one, and it would look pretty good. And this stuff is cheap too. I think I paid like nine dollars for a 12 by 24 inch sheet of it, and it cuts very, very, very easily. Okay, here is the display, the whole unit. Now you can see on there, this is the display driver board. This controls the actual display and converts the various inputs. These are what they call the GPIO pins, focus, on the Pi. These let you input various uh, digital and analog signals and in and out of the Pi as well as you can power devices off of the Pi. Well, I'm using the Pi's uh, pins to actually power the display right here. That's what these are for. Instead of using the uh, micro SD power right there on the display driver. It's a horrible angle, but it works. Okay, yes. Right there. And of course, this is you have to have this plugged in. This is what powers your Pi right here, micro SD. So... Um, I get a lot of questions about how I plan on powering this display or powering this dash and there's a company called Mosberry Circuits. They make a uh, automatic switching power supply for the Pi meant for automotive use. So when you turn the ignition on and you start your car it senses the voltage coming on from the ignition switch and it will actually power up the Pi and then it's combined with a custom uh, Python script that you run that it'll boot up your Pi and will shut your Pi automatically when it senses the ignition off. So you're not just killing the power to the Pi, which can cause corruption to your uh, SD card, your micro SD card. Let's see here. This right here, let's see, it's a real time clock module. Uh, with the Pi, if you power it off and you disconnect it, usually two thing, one of two things happens. It either resets the time and date to 1970 for some bizarre reason or it just resets it to whatever. So, let me pull this off here. And it just slides onto the pins. You can see it right here. Yeah, my hands are dirty, but in the garage. Ah, come on. Okay. Oh, my camera sucks, but there's not much to it. It's just a basically just a little battery that keeps just enough voltage going into the Pi to allow it to keep its memory. So this is the flat ribbon cable coming out of the display. The display itself is just incredible. I've used um, the Tontic 
Tontic uh, 7 inch touchscreen display and instead of being all built into one like this it comes with an actual overlay, plastic overlay that you have to mount and be very precise and calibrate with the display. This here comes all just as one piece calibrated easy to go and look how thin that bezel is that thing is just a sliver so you could really easily incorporate this into your project and it's pretty cheap I, I can't remember what I paid for it I'll throw a link down there in the description but for the quality of the build I mean it, it's a solid piece for the quality it, it, you just can't beat it. There's a bunch of other displays out there, but I, I just haven't found one that I think is as good as this. So, set that down. And here is another addition that I plan on adding to my system. I don't know if we'll be able to see this or not. Come on, focus. All right, there you go. It's upside down. There we go. This is a three axis axis accelerometer. And basically what this will do, this is will let this will let me measure G forces in three different axes. So I can measure and data log my uh, cornering G's or my how many G's I pull on the launch on acceleration and braking. So basically that's what you, I have right now. Um, my plans in the future I am really hoping that somebody can get dual to dual independent displays working on a pie without a complicated add-on as I think it would be really neat to have maybe a three and a half inch display on at least one side and I could have a single selected data parameter such as maybe uh, fuel level or g-forces or whatever over here and then have my main display over here I do plan on adding an analog gauge over here maybe my uh, air fuel gauge controller for my uh, widebands so but that's all there is to it right now so um, I'm still waiting on my GPS module I plan on adding a GPS so and that's all I have right now. So, thanks for watching. Uh, click subscribe. Click the uh, thumbs up if you like it. Want to see more? Thank you.